What's going on, guys? One love out to everybody. We got UFC Fight Night Smith versus Spawn prediction breakdown, guys. Before I start this video, give me those thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and subscribe to my Patreon account, guys. We got 14 fights in this card. It was 15, but um, Nicholas and Cameron fell off the card. Hopefully, nobody else fall off because I put a lot of homework. I put a lot of work into this card. And sorry for bringing out the card so late, but 14 fights. Each guy, I always watch video on every single person, regardless if it's an undercard. I'm watching up to like sometimes three videos on one person. So sometimes it takes me days <laughs> just to finish you know one or two person right so i put a lot of work into these cars guys um on the contender series there um like i said sign up to my patreon account because on the contender series i had a prop bet there for that main fight um i believe it was junior almeida um i had him for submission remember he was fighting that um i believe it's a russian fighter he was fighting right and um you know, the, the Russian guy was a favorite, and actually Juno Almeida was the underdog in that one, and I had him by submission, right? So, sign up to the Patreon account, guys, because a lot of times I drop, well, I want to say, I, well, majority of the time I drop my plays in there, from the face-off picks, most of the prop bets, that was actually a prop bet that I dropped on there, right? I also dropped some combination parlays, too. So, um, we're going to jump to this card before I start the old Bellator. I'm going to work on that one too, but for the Bellator card, I'm going to give you seven fights, guys, because the undercard here, man, this guy's making a debut, and there's no footage on these guys, man. So, I mean, you could heads or tail it, but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm not going to even go into that. So I'm just going to start off with Khaled here and work my way up to your you all Romero, okay? So you guys can check that out after I drop this prediction here and break it down for you. All right, just jump into this, guys. It's a 14 fights. There's a lot of fights. Um... It's a pretty decent card, man. I mean, these guys come here and put the work in, you know what I mean? As long as they come here and they perform, it is what it is, right? Hats off to all these guys, women here. You know, it's not an easy sport to come into and, and punch people in the face. It's actually a dangerous sport, like I always say. Your health is your wealth. So you want to do the moving, do the hitting, and avoid getting hit. So jump to this, guys. First fight here, we get Emily Whitmire versus Hanny Goldie. Also, guys, I take notes and everybody too. So I write down all my notes so that I can remember. Even though I can look at the guys, I remember what I write notes down. This makes it, it makes it easier for me because <laughs> it's a lot of fights. Emily Whitmire here. We're gonna start with her right here. Um, she's gonna be the more experienced fighter here, right? She got the two inch of reach and uh, inch of height. Um, she has more of the relaxed strike in here. You know what I'm saying? She kind of flew with it a little better. Um, she would look for the takedowns and also the submission, right? Um, her strong point, though, I would say is the groan. But her stand-up has gotten better, okay? Um, her opponent here, Goldie. Um, Goldie's a short notice. Um, Goldie is still in learning process, in my opinion. Um, she would throw some kicks here and some punches and um but you see her head is kind of straight up and she kind of stiff on the movement right like i said she's in the learning process still, so she kind of walked towards you like a robot and her head is straight up so it's easy to get her with shots when she's coming in but she throws wild though and obviously she throws her hand and it connects you know you can't hurt the opponent you know what i'm saying your face your chin not meant to get a hit right um movements kind of stiff like i say and she's hittable but she's physically strong and she could be the stronger person here but um i'm liking whitmire here i feel whitmire is a little more experienced and like i said her movement is a little better she's a little more flows with the punches and her footwork's a little better and her ground game is also better too in my opinion so i'm gonna go with emily whitmire here and i must say whitmire by decision guys but this fight here i am not confident and i'm gonna check the odds after this and we're going to see, but for me, this is a straight even fight, okay? So the odds should be even on this. If any other than that, it's totally wrong, but even is what I have, okay? So with my by decision, not confident. Next fight, we've got Dus <laughs> Duskovo. We've got Gustavo Lopez versus Heli Anteleg. Um, Lopez here, he's a heavy hitter, man. Um, uh, he's a well-rounded guy, too, and his wrestling is not too bad, right? Um... Mm. He can take this fight anywhere, but he gets wild, man. He gets wild, and he would have swing, swing like overhands and rush, rushing in. His chin is high, 
and he's hateable man he's he's gonna be the more hateable guy here and like I said, he, he will come in here and swing his hands. And if he connects, he will knock you out. I mean, he packed power, right? And his main thing, though, I feel is just wrestling. But his opponent here, though, um, Heli. Um, Heli going to be the quicker fighter here, right? Um, I feel I feel Heli's wrestling, in my opinion, is better. And Heli's also well-rounded, and Heli's a heavy hitter right and um he can take this fight anywhere too if he wants to right um both guys are kind of similar in a kind of way and um both can get knocked down and hurt but i feel that with heli heli is a little more sharper with the boxing with the hands right he was still there pop the jab he's not so he's not so well like Lopez is, but he does get wild though, but he's a little more precise with the strike and he will more set up with the jab and come over the top, right? So for those reasons why, you know, I feel like he's a sharper guy, sharper movement, I'm going to go with Heli for the win here. And I'm going to say Heli, I'm going to say Heli by decision, but you could see a knockout here though. But I'm going to say Heli by decision, but I'm, I'm not confident in this one because like I said, Gustavo Lopez He's a heavy hitter too, and both guys are kind of similar. I'm just edging it to Heli for more of the technical movement, and I feel that Heli hands a little better, and his movement is better, and his wrestling, in my opinion, is better. So he can push and grind for takedowns and probably pull off a decision or a close split decision, all right? So I'm liking Heli by decision, guys. Next fight here, we got Impa Kasangana versus Carlson Harris. Um... Uh, Impa here, um, I believe he's a 185er, right? Here he was a 185er and he moved down to 170, right? So basically, this is going to be his, hold on there. Okay, this, this is going to be his second fight at 170, all right? Um, Impa is a well-rounded guy, um, but doesn't have any finishes though. It doesn't have any KO, TK, or knockouts or anything like that. Right? Um let's see something here. I believe he may have a submission, but he has no knockout finishes. Uh, let's see here guys. Real real quick here. Um hmm. He has three by submissions, right? Um Impa here, like I said, he has no finishes. I'm reading from my notes, guys. Um, his ground game is decent. He has a little wrestling there. He will get you to the ground. Like I said, three by submission. Um, Impa is slow at the movement, though. Right? His punches and his movement is very slow, and you can counter him, right? And he's also hitable, right? And his head is right on the center line. And because of that slow movement... You know, taking a head off center line, he's slow in, in even doing that too. So if, if you can time him, you can catch him all the time, especially with a jab, right? And if you can catch him with a jab, then you can set up with something else off of the jab. So that's the thing about Impa here, what I notice in all of his fights, right? Doesn't take his head off center line, and even his punches are, are kind of slow at the movement. He's a strong dude, and, and he's a pretty tough guy, like a sense of like he can take hits. And then they keep on going. But like I said, you don't want to take hits like that because the more you take hits and damage like that, when you're going to your next fight, the slower you're going to be because you're taking brain damage. All right? Um, his opponent here, um, Harris. Um, Harris is going to have the inch of height and a two inch of... Is it two inch of reach? Yeah, he's going to have the inch of height and... Hold on there. And an inch of reach. Okay, so you can have an inch of height and an inch of reach, right? Um, purple belt, BJJ. Um, he stays grinded. Um, let me see. He will look for the takedowns. He's very consistent with that, with grinding, grinding, and also look for the submission, then, right? Can get hurt on the foot, though, but he will compose himself and recover quickly, right? Um, but he fights long, though, right? He fights very long. Um, let me see here. Uh, and we look for the knockout. He has a 1-2. Bam, bam, straight on the pocket, right? Um, he's a very well-rounded guy. I feel he's a more experienced guy, right? And his cardio, 
also looks good. It looks like he will be fading, but then, like I said, he's composed himself because of that experience, right? If you look at Impa, Impa is not a really experienced guy, man. You know, he's he's been in the game for what? He started back in 2017. I mean, for the fights he fought, you know, it's not really much anybody really fought, man. To be honest with you, he fought Joaquin Buckley, got caught with that jump spinning back kick. Um, beat Sasha here, Mickey Pelotto. Um Yeah, he's, he's not experienced. I mean, if you look at Carlton or Carlson Harris, Carlton Harris is a very experienced guy, man. And from what I see from him, he looks good, man. Even his wrestling and his submission game and his striking, he looks very good. And he's a qu and he's gonna be the quicker fighter here. His timing and precision, his always distancing and how he uses his range. Even though it's an inch, like I said, but one inch is good. You know, if you have a little bit of in you, you know how to use it. Even if you don't have it, you just know to stay on the outside and pop that jab and follow up and then set up for takedowns. I mean, you're good, right? So for this fight here, man, there's a speed advantage here, man, and there's an experience advantage. And then wherever Impa may be good in, Harris is also good in there. And I feel Harris could be even better. So I have to go for Harris for this fight here for, for the win here, man. I, I just feel like he's a more experienced guy, man. And everything is on his side. Speed, the durability is on his side. The submission game grown he's scrambling i mean the guy is is pretty well rounded man i really don't really see much holes in this game i mean he, he could get caught with punches but again the speed and impo is not that quick of a fighter and he's going on to 170 you know impo dropping on to 170 here so even though this is going to be his second fight but he's not really a fighter that fights at once he's mostly at 185 so that could play a factor too I'm liking Harris here, guys. I must say Harris by um, KO TKO. And I must say KO TKO in the first round. Um, and I'm confident in this one, guys. This is a fight I'm confident in. All right? So, like I said, but my confidence is like anything can happen. Because not because I'm confident, that doesn't mean that, you know, Harris is going to win. Because anything is possible in this game. Man. He could come in here and then pull off a win. You never know. But I'm liking Harris here. And I must say Harris by KO TKO in the first round, guys. Next fight here, we have Erin Blatchfield versus Sarah Alpar. Erin here, man, um, um, she's pretty impressive, man. I watch a lot of fights. I think I watch every single one of her fights, all the ones that I could see. From Tracy Cortez, from the Gabriel fight, Victoria, the Borgen, and also Brittany Cloud. I watch every single fight, man. Um, her ground game is pretty freaking impressive. I'm impressed with her ground game. Her striking um, is coming along. You know, it still needs some work, but it's coming along. She is going to have the five inch of reach here. It's a BJJ brown belt. Her head is kind of straight up. She needs to work on moving her head side to side like a windshield wiper. Take the head off center line. Um, her groan is her strong point, like I said. Her, her groan, I'm pretty impressed with that, man. Um, at times, with the movement, she can be slow. Um, she has that... Is it? She has that right head kick though. She has that Mawashi Gary from off the right leg, which she catch a lot of women with that and also knock them down with that. I believe she knocked down Leonardo with that and knocked down other girls with it too. So her head kicks are, are pretty decent off of that right leg, her Mawashi Gary, right? It doesn't have no setup, it just comes straight up, right? Um, her takedown game is good and like I said, her submission game is also good. Against Cortez here, Man, they robbed her in that fight, man. That means a close fight, but I had Erin watching that fight. When I watched the fight over, I had Erin winning that fight, right? I mean, she took her down the third round. First round, she had her down to, I mean, I think Cortez maybe won the second, maybe. But um, they, they robbed her in that fight. But she looks very impressive, man, I mean, in all our wins here. Um... Let me see here. Uh, uh, let's see, was she a 125er? Yep, 125er. Her opponent here, Alpar, Sarah Alpar here. Um, she's a 135er, I believe, which is going on to 125. So I feel like she she has never fought at she has fought at 125 before but she lost. Um with Alpa here, um she's a grinder man. She's gonna really more push her wrestling. 
you know her wrestling is mostly her thing her striking is still in the works it needs some work still um but she relies heavy on her wrestling and her grinding she's gonna push against the cage and try to go for takedown takedown takedowns against erin man i mean erin in my opinion her ground game is pretty legit man and if if alpar push 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 consistently i can see erin getting a submission man so i mean that's i mean that's what i see in this fight here Again, our part could be maybe physically stronger here, you know what I'm saying? But I'm liking Aaron for the win. And I must say Aaron, um, I must say Aaron by submission, guys. But I'm, I'm not confident in this one, though. But I must say submission. And, um, yeah, I'm not confident. This is a risky one because, like, like I said, Aaron is good. And she's making her debut, I believe. And our part... You know, it's a little bit more experience in a kind of way. But the way how Alpar strikes, it's, you know, it needs a lot of work. And Aaron striking, in my opinion, is better. And I feel Aaron's ground game is better. Um, Alpar um, wrestling may be a little better, but Aaron can get taken on too. And I feel that Aaron's grappling her jujitsu is, is better than Alpar. So. I feel that Aaron can win this fight in any in any position, in anywhere to fight, I feel Aaron can win it. So I got Aaron by submission, guys. Alright? But I'm not confident in this one, guys. And um This fight here is a this fight is an even fight. It, it, this this fight should it should be an even fight in my opinion. It should be. Alright? They may be edging Aaron a little bit, but she's making a debut. So I mean I don't really see her being a, a huge favorite. I mean, she could be a, a small favorite, but very close to even. All right. Next fight here, we got Mantel Jackson versus JP Baez. Um, Jackson here, man, he's a pretty well-rounded guy, man. He fights long. He uses his reach very well. He's going to have the five inch of height, guys, and an eight inch of freaking reach. That's massive. That's massive. At 136, man, this dude has a long freaking reach 8 inch reach and 5 inch of height dude and he also has wrestling too so it's not like he's just a striker he has a wrestling and he can look for submissions also and his striking is decent with power he get power man he set up and come over the top bam and catches you or he counters you so Jax is a, is a pretty good fighter man um, he's a pretty well rounded guy JP Beiser is taking this fight on a short notice um JP Beiser, he, he's a well-rounded guy too, and his wrestling is mostly his thing, but he was also a strike with you too. He fights at 125 and 135, but I think majority of his fights, it seems to be split up like 125 and 135, so like on and off. Uh, it could be even, uh, but with JP here, man, JP is hittable, man, and when you hit him, if you catch him with something, especially if Jackson catch him, you can, you can see him getting stunned. You know what I'm saying? Maybe flash knockdown, right? Um, and once you get flash knockdown, then you can finish him. Like eventually after he gets hurt, he will get back up and then you can actually hurt him again, right? Um, but he will look for the submission though. And, he, and, in, and in this fight, he's going to try to grind in this fight. He's going to try to push his wrestling hard in this fight because he doesn't want to stand with Jackson because he you know Jackson striking. You know, is you know Jackson going to have the power in this fight, man. And if he stands up with Jackson, he, he could get knocked out in this fight. So he's going to really come in here and try to grind, 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 grind. But... J JP Baez will get tired too. I mean, this is a guy, I mean, you keep pushing, pushing, wrestling, push, grind, and grind, you're going to get yourself out. You see what I'm saying? So, I mean, from what I've seen, I mean, the only way I can see him in this fight, if he can grind, 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 but he has to grind for three rounds. I mean, can he do it? Yeah, I mean, it's a possibility and avoid getting knocked out. I mean, it's a possibility, but like I said, with JP Baez, you, you can catch him with something and get flash knockout. He get flash knocked down his days and you can finish him after that. Um... Maybe something with his jaw, his chin, you know. Remember I told you guys, you keep getting hit, hit, con hit, hit consistently. Eventually after a while, you know, you keep getting touched up, you're just going to get knocked out. Because you, he's consistently get hit over, over and over again. He got two by knockout. I believe his last fight was by knockout. Yeah, Bruno Silva by T TKO, all right? Um, I'm liking um, Jackson for this fight here, guys. And um, I must say... Um, Jackson by KOTQ in the first round. I mean, JP Baez wrestling is decent, but Jackson got wrestling too, and he can defend the tail on them. 
And when it comes to stand up, man, that damn eight inch reach and five inch of height, man, plays a massive factor in this fight, man. And JP taking a short, short notice fight. You now, if it was like a Khabib kind of style of wrestling, and he go in there and like, you know, he lace up the legs of the Dagestani and handcuff and kind of hold him down there, eh, maybe. But I, I'm. I like Jackson for this one, and I want to say KOTQ guys, and I'm confident in this play right here. All right. Next fight here, we got Zurog versus Brandon Jenkins. Um, Rog here is um, he's pretty lead in his feet, man. He has decent striking. Um, looks like he's trained at ATT, which he is trained at ATT. <laughs> um, he got some holes in his games over here and there. He's a young cat still, like 21 years old. So he got some little holes there, man. But, um, you know, he can get counted here and there. But but he does move, though, and, and he's light in his foot. And he does move his head from time to time. And, you know, he will, you know, at time to time take the head off the center line. But sometimes the head is there. So you can catch him with jabs, like from his last fight. Um, but he's well rounded though, and then he will counter you with counter strikes, and he will take you down and look for submissions too. But he's striking, you know. He's, he's, I mean, striking is sharp. You know, you can tell that the movement is good. He knows his distance and range. He knows how to set it up. But like I said, sometimes his head is there to get hit, right? So that's, that's that, that is that is what I saw in a, a lot of his fights actually when I'm watching it, especially against a Vargas fight to the fight that he lost, right? His opponent here, Brandon Jenkins, um. <laughs> Jenkins is, you know, will walk you down, man. This this is a guy that's, he's kind of not a with his movement, man. He will walk you down. Um, I feel wrong is more the technical guy here, but Jenkins is also technical too. He's kind of sneaky with his movements, you know. He will switch up stance on you and he will, you know, fake something and hit you with something else. Maybe a flying knee, maybe a spinning elbow, spinning back fist. Um, let me see here. Um, a lot of flying kicks, a lot of flying techniques, flying flying knees. It's kind of unorthodox, like I said. And he will catch you with something, man. So this is a fight here where... This this is a risky one here, guys. I mean, even though Rung, I feel like he's a more technical kind of guy here, man. But he's kind of... He's kind of a young cat still. I mean, age is a number. And he has a lot of fights, though. But a lot of his fights, though, are in WF Wars. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, and if you look at Brandon Jenkins here, you know, you, you know, being PFPFL there, um, LF, LFA, uh, but the movement from wrong, you know, he should probably win him this fight, but it's a fight I'm not confident in because I do believe that Jenkins could win this fight, man, because it's kind of tricky at the movement, man, and it's, it's sly, you know, but like I said, you know, I'm going more towards wrong here because just the movement and he knows how to move and he knows his distance in the range so whatever Jenkins set up he should be able to can maybe counter it but again Jenkins is tricky like I said switch up stance on you and then fake tends to hit you with something else all right so um risky one here guys but I must say uh Zurong by decision but I'm not confident in this one at all and for me this is an even fight and Jenkins making his debut uh, he won over um, Jacob Kilburn, and Kilburn used to be in the UFC here. He caught him with the flying knee, I believe. He switched knee, right? Kind of like what um, Jorge Mas Masvidal did um, to, um, what's his name? To that wrestler guy, I forgot his name. But he, he switched upon him when they hit him with the knee, right? Jumped with one leg up and hit him with the knee. So like I said, this guy will switch up techniques on you, right? Um, I'm going to go with the wrong here, but believe me, I'm not confident, and Jenkins could win. So I'm going to say you're wrong by decision, guys. All right. Next fight here, we have uh, Panny Kelzad versus Raquel Pennington. Um, Panny here, um, she has improved a lot, man. Her you know, striking gotten better. She works off her jab, kind of lighten the feet. Um, she's very durable. Um, I actually felt, though, you know, with that Davis fight, um, I felt like she lost against Davis, man. I felt like Davis could have won that fight by a split. I mean, from what I've seen from watching the fight over again, right? Uh, I just felt like the pressure from Davis, even though Davis was getting hit with some jabs, but the pressure and pushing up against the cage, I believe there were some takedowns too. Um, I think Davis was throwing more of the harder shots. But um, yeah, I felt like 
you know that Davis won that fight though. Um, her opponent here, Rickel Pennington. Um, Rickel is going to have the more experience here, right? She's more of a brawler though, and she will push forward and just let the hands go. But she's going to have the mental and physical strength, you know, the mental and physical strength here, right? She will keep pushing forward. She's pretty strong in the clinch, and she's going to be a tougher woman here. The straight aggression, push forward, you know, she takes a lot of damage though, but she keeps coming forward and keep throwing heavy. Right, um, there could be a strength factor here, and the strength factor is going to be on the Raquel side. Right, um, this is the next risky one here, man. I actually had Ken Zed running for more of the outside, popping the jab, moving around. But what I saw from Ken Zed with Davis, I felt Davis won that fight, and I feel with, with Raquel, Raquel can close that distance and push against the cage and kind of make this fight dirty, man. You know, I don't feel Penny handles you know the straightforward aggression. You know, she doesn't handle that well. And with Raquel, Raquel does that well. Pushes forward, push against a cage and beat you up. <laughs> I mean, Penny will pop the jab, pop the jab, pop the jab. But there's a strength factor here, man. And mental. I feel Raquel is more mentally on. I feel Ken Z could break under that pressure. And then the experience from Raquel. So I'm going for Raquel here for the win, guys. And I must say Raquel by uh, decision. But this is a fight where I'm not confident in it. And in my opinion... This fight is a close to even fight. I may edge Raquel a little bit, you know, even, close to even. But this fight shouldn't be high on odds, man. Shouldn't. Like, the odds shouldn't be high on Raquel. Because Penny could stay on the horse and then pop up and, and then pull off a decision. It's possible. But that pressure, like I said, plays a huge factor here. So I'm liking Raquel by decision, guys. Not confident. Next fight here. We have... Stefan Nokiwi, <laughs> no, I'm mispronounced, I'm sorry, man, <laughs> versus Mike Rodriguez. Um, Tefon here, um, he's a heavy hitter. Um, uh, let me see here. But he hunts the knockout, though. He chased the knockout. And you know, when you're chasing knockouts, you um, usually don't get it. You have to set it up. right? You have to get the timing right, distance and range right. And you use something to set up the knockout. If you're just chasing and swinging, 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 you're just going to wear yourself out. Right, so he likes to chase and knock out. Right, um, if he does it against experienced guys, he's not gonna win. And he was doing that against an experienced guy in Jung Young Park. And Jung Young Park just paced himself and waited till the third round, and then <laughs> he got a decision win. Um, he's slow at the movement though, and he actually fights at 205 and 265 here. So he usually fights at a heavy, heavy weight. He was at 185 for majority of his fights. Well, for that one G Jimmy Pickett fight, the contender series, it was 205. So I guess he's going back up to 205. So this is a guy that fights at a massive weight, like 260. He fights at heavyweight, dude. And he fights at light heavyweight. So so he was fighting at 185. And against Park, he fought at 185. So maybe that's why he maybe looked at it against Park. But like I said, his experience is not really there. And he chases a knockout, right? His opponent here, Mike Rodriguez. Man, man, with Mike here, man, Mike has the tools and he's gonna have the five inch reach, which is a lot, it's massive, and the four inch of height, man. But man, Mike will drop the ball though, man, and he will gas, man. And like I said, hats off to all the fighters here. It's not an easy sport to come in here and fight, and it's difficult to come in here and punch somebody in the face and kick them in the face and beat up the person, man. It's difficult to go do that. And it's based on mental. He meant to control the physical. And with Mike here, I believe Mike, I believe Mike issues is more mental than anything else. Because he meant to control the physical. I mean, there is times when he's on, and if he's usually, usually when he's on, is usually if he can finish the fight in the first round. So he's more like a first round finisher here. Um, it's a mental thing. Can get taken down consistently. Um, let me see here. Uh, he has a potential though, and he can knock you out. And he usually does that, like I said, in the first round. You know, he will catch you with the knees. Um, you know, if he lets his hand go and his and his kicks go, I mean, he could finish you. You know, he, he has uh, he has his tools, but like I said, he's more like a first round finisher. And if he doesn't finish you in the first round, then he breaks mentally. And he does that in every single fight. You can look at all his fights here. If he can't finish your first round, he loses. First round win. First round win, first round win, first round. See, he's a first round finisher. And if he can, this is a second round. He has a couple, two second rounds here, but his majority of his fights are all first round. And if he's unable to finish in first round, he breaks. 
it, it, will, it will break under pressure and that's a mental thing for those reasons man it's difficult to I mean to pick I mean he's supposed to can you know beat tough on it he's supposed to can be tough on I mean he gonna have the height and reach and he has the tools but me dealing with mental I mean all tough on need to do is take him out of the first tough on just need to survive first round that's all he needs to do which I feel tough on can because tough on is a durable guy and he can take a hit so once he can take him out of the first then might lose the fight so I'm going for a tough one for the fight. And I'm going to say a tough one by KOTKO in the second round, guys. Right? Mike may come in here different, you know, if he works on his mental. But again, man, it's free. I mean, you can train all the punches and kicks you want, but it's hard to train mental, man. You can't teach mental. I can show you kicks and punching the movement, but you can't teach mental. So I got tough one, KOTKO, second round, guys. Next fight here, we got Joaquin Buckley versus Antonio Arroyo. Okay, um, Buckley here is going to have a 3 inch of reach, surprisingly. He's going to be the shorter guy, but he has a long reach on him, right? He's a powerhouse, man, very heavy hitter. Um, but he can get knocked out and be knocked out three times, I believe. Um, doesn't really handle a hit too well, man. He doesn't handle a hit too well, man. Um, let me see here. Uh, it seems like he's working on more wrestling. Maybe I think believe I think I believe that his wrestling could be his base here, and he's kind of going back to that. So he's been working a lot more wrestling, which will help him a lot in this fight because Aurora has a hard time stopping takedowns, man. So um, with opponent here, Aurora, um, Aurora is going to have the five inch of height. Um, Aurora has the tools, man. He has the tools, but he will gas out, and he usually gas out in that late second round. And he can also get submitted, man. Um, he has a hard time stopping takedown, so that's why I see Buckley working his wrestling. So maybe Buckley's base could be wrestling. I'm not quite sure about that, but he's training a lot of wrestling. And um, if he comes in there and push wrestling, he may can win this fight. But his gas tank, though, man, if you're pushing takedown, pushing takedown, pushing takedown, I mean, it will gas you out. If you notice here against Darren Wynn, Darren Wynn is a very high-level wrestler. Buckley, from what I've seen from all his fights, he's not a high-level wrestler. You know, there's sometimes he shoot and he doesn't get a takedown. So, I mean, Buckley may have tra trained wrestling, but it's not his really his thing. I feel like there's a power is more his thing. You go in there and try to take your head off. But with Darren Wynn here, he's a freaking high-level wrestler, man. I mean, he's known for that. So, and also Darren can take a hit. He can. He was taking some hits against Aurora, man. But it's just that that grindy craft in a wrestler. Take a hit and just keep on grabbing ankles and keep going for single double legs, man. He just, he just, he's not gonna stop, right? So if Aurora lands one of those kicks or punches that he land on win in that first round, I can see Buckley going down off of that, man. Because Buckley can't take a hit, and Aurora striking is very technical. He just said he can get taken down, but he's very technical. Against a high-level wrestler, he's not going to do good. I don't feel Buckley is a high-level wrestler. You know, Buckley, you know, he's a powerful dude. You know, he landed a spinning back kick. Yeah, it's good. But to keep the fight going and to keep it very technical and keep it distancing and range and everything like that and keep the fight going, I don't think he's able to do that. And I feel Aurora can do that. So for those reasons there, I'm going for Aurora for the win. But I am not confident in this one. I'm not confident in this one at all, man. And this fight right here, it should be an even match. It should be an even match, man. Buckley and Aurora is an even match. It's a risky one to pick. And um, I must say Aurora by KOTQ, guys. And I'm not confident in that one, okay? I know a lot of people may go for Buckley because they say, oh, Buckley's going to knock out Aurora, but Aurora never been knocked out. And if you look at how Aurora strike, he, he, he knows what he's doing when he's striking. His time and his position. Kind of similar. Actually, I must say this. His striking is better than Sharuka. His, his striking is better than Alesso for arm striking. Alessio can strike, but Aurora is more quicker and more precise. Right? And you saw that with Wynn. Wynn was taking some big shots, but Wynn can take a hit. Buckley can't take a hit, though. So I would say Aurora is a better striker than Shar Sharuko. His technique is sharper. His distance and timing is a little sharper, even though Alessio is still not to Buckley. But I'm liking Aurora for this one. And I must say Aurora by KOTQ, guys. All right? Next fighter, we got Nate Menis versus Tony Gravel. 
Nate here um, is going to have a 3 inch of reach and a 5 inch of height, which is massive. A lot of these guys got some mad ass height of these guys, man, and reach. Um, Manis is a pretty well rounded guy, man. I, I like how he looks in there, man. Um, he will look for the submissions. Um, but I noticed with his striking, though, you know, he, he would get to fury, and when he get to furies, man, he would just duck his head and start swinging well. That's not good because you're kind of leaving yourself open to get countered or uppercut because you're not seeing where the punch is coming from. You're just swinging, right? It's cause, so he kind of brawl at times. Um, but sometimes he will land though, like like what you saw here against Luke Sanders. He did that and, and, and he caught Luke, Luke Sanders with a punch and knocked him down, and that's why he got a rear naked choke, right? His opponent here, Tony Gravel. Tony Graveler is training at the American top team, and off his two wins here was an American top team. So, uh, like I said, when you go to the American top team, if, if you have a strong wrestling foundation, they will work with you and build you up. Even if you don't have a wrestling foundation, but they will work with you and then find you know what you're good at and then add on to that, right? So Gravel has a strong wrestling base here. And he also has Taekwondo black belt, right? Crafty guy, grindy. Um, he will push your wrestling and pull off the win on you. So he will grind with a win on you, right? Um, what I see from Manis, Manis is not bad. And I feel that like Manis has a chance to win this fight. And it's very possible. But what I saw from him against... Um, uh, but I saw him against Luke Sanders and even Munez. He was getting taken down, especially against Munez, who was taking him down. Tony Gravel, coming from American Top Team, he's gonna game plan and set. He's gonna game plan and pace himself, and then later on he's gonna grind, 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 and avoid. But Gravel can get submitted though. That's that's the thing. And Menes do have submissions, but I don't think he has submissions from off his bat though. He doesn't have submissions from off his bat. We're gonna check that out to make sure. I believe he may have some Kumura or something like that. He has a rear naked choke and a barber choke, right? So, and he has three by submission there. He has a okay, he has a rear naked choke with Luke Sanders too. So he doesn't really possess that submission from off his back. So Tony Gravel may not have nothing to worry about, but I feel that like Tony Gravel will get him down and he's gonna set the pace. He's gonna set the tone. He's gonna pace himself, land some shots. And then look for takedown, takedowns. And um, I feel like Grab are gonna edge out a decision here. And um, like I said, with the reach and the height though from Menace, you gotta be careful with that though. And, and, uh, and like I said, this is a fight that I'm not confident with. I do believe that Nate has a chance to win this fight, so be very careful with it, man. That reach and height can play a factor here. But like I said, Gravel, you know, he looks you know he's a pretty good fighter, you know, and, and he and he's a very technical dude and he looks good on the stand up and his wrestling looks good. But again, Manis doesn't look bad either, right? So I must say gravel by decision, guys, okay? Next fight here, we got Christos Gagos versus Arman Tosharukin. Christos here. Christos is, has a wrestling base here. Um, he's a well-rounded guy. Uh, we'll let his hands go. We'll also look for takedowns and definitely look for the submissions, which he pulled up a submission in his last fight here against Sean Sharuno. Um, but against Armani, man, Armani is no joke, man. But anything is possible, though, man. I mean, Gagos is an experienced guy, man. So, I mean, like I said, Armani, or Armand, I mean, he has the Khabib kind of style. <laughs> you know, the Dagestani and the handcuff, he lays the legs up. I mean, we see him against what he did to Macrovolo. You know, he came into that fight missing weight, though, which I'm going to go watch the Wayans after this and everything. And I'm going to drop those face off and all the wins on my Patreon account. So you guys can check that out. But he didn't come in weight. And you could see that he was struggling in that fight. So like I said, the face on wins are pretty important. Because you can see if the guy make weight and how to look on the scale, right? So with, with Amani here, Amani, you know what I'm saying? He has a Khabib style here, man. Very durable grinder. Stand up is not bad either. And he's well around. He's going to keep pushing, grind, 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 grind. But like I said... All depend if he may wait. If he don't make weight, it looks like he's kind of off. He may want to probably look towards Gagos a little bit. But I feel Amani should have the win here. If he comes in shape and come prepared. So I'm going to go with Amon by a decision here, guys. And um, I'm confident in this one. It also could be a submission too, depending on, on what state he comes in. If he makes weight or not. Which I'm gonna, which the wins went off already. The wins already went by already. Which I can tell you now, he made weight. It's 155, so he actually made the weight. He actually made the weight, right? But so, but I'm gonna check the scales out still. I'm gonna watch the face of some wins and then post that on my Patreon. So um, 
yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with Amon here. I must say Amon by decision. And I'm confident in this play, guys. All right. Next fight here. We have Mandy Baum versus Irene Lipsky. Mandy Baum here. Um, three inch of reach here, which is massive. She actually looks taller, though, than what the stats are saying. And sometimes with topology, you know, most of the times they're accurate. And with sure dog, most of the time they're accurate, but sometimes they could be off a little bit. But she looks freaking taller and longer, man. Um, she fights long, um, has some nasty knees in the clinch and the elbows, right? She will work in the clinch and also look for the takedowns from in the clinch, right? Um, she fights behind her jab. She snaps it out there. She will fade in the later rounds, though, but she holds her composure, right? Um, with Lipsky here, Erin Lipsky here, um, she has the tools, you know, this is kind of similar to, this is kind of similar to Rodriguez, man. It's very similar to Mike Rodriguez. She has the tools, but you're dealing with a mental thing here, man. And like I said, you can't teach mental. So, I mean, she will go in there, she will swing the hand, the kicks and everything, but you can take her down. And when you take her down, she'll just lay on her back. And she'll lay on her back for the entire round. And you can beat her up and finish her on the ground. Right? Um, she's going to be the more experienced girl here, though. Right? And But like I said, she can get easily taken down. And she doesn't improve her position. She just stays there flat. And she fades mentally. So, like I said, when it comes to mental, man, that controls everything. And if you're not mentally on, it's just not going to happen, man. And you can see it in all our fights against the Della Rosa fight that was just in what June I mean no way in September I mean this is not that much I mean I mean hey man I mean any, anything is possible I'm, I'm you know what I'm saying I'm coming here and be positive I mean she could she could pull the fight off you know what I'm saying she could win for being this experienced and Mandy's like seven and zero I mean Mandy ain't fighting nobody really at all I mean they're probably trying to give her a win here but what I see from you know Mandy though I mean Mandy I mean, Mandy looks good on the foot, man. She, 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 she knows her distance and range, man. She knows her movement, man. And she fired that jab, and she fights long, and she's going to have the three-inch reach. And she can also take the fight to the ground. So what I see from her is not like she can't strike. I mean, she can strike. I mean, if Liz could come in here and then swing, swing and catch her with something, then it's possible she can get a knockout. I mean, that's very possible. It's not a fight that I'm confident in, but it's hard to pick Lipsky because I feel Lipsky is mentally not there. Like, she's not in the fight. Right? She's, there's something going on, but um, it is what it is. And, you know, enough love to everybody here, enough love to all the women, them, you know. If she comes in there and win, then that's great. You know, hats off to her, but I'm going to go with Mandy Baum for the win here. And I'm going to say Mandy Baum by a decision, guys. But I'm not confident in this one because just of the experience. And if Lipsy come in here and then choose to fight and choose to, you know, her mental comes back or she figure out something in her head, then she could win. But difficult to pick somebody who's mentally not on because anything can happen. So I'm like Mandy by decision, guys. All right. Ian Cutabella versus Devin Clark. Ian here. He's a very athletic guy, very strong, strong wrestling base, Greco-Roman combat sambo, grind on you, take you down, lace up your legs, kind of like Khabib style to him. Heavy hitter, heavy freaking ground and pound, but he will gas out. But against his last fight here against Dustin Jacob, he actually improved on his endurance. He kind of went all three rounds and, and he actually got a draw in that fight, right? Um, both guys are pretty much kind of similar, man. And Devin Clark, they're pretty similar. Not the best fight IQ. <laughs> Both of them don't have a good fight IQ, man, right? Um, but I feel that Ian, you know, has a better wrestling here. And I feel Ian has a better striking too, right? Clark here. Clark is a very athletic guy. He's strong dude too. Has a wrestling base, but he will also gas out, right? He would throw wild overhands, kind of rush forward. Um, but with Clark, Clark can get taken down. So even though he has a wrestling base, you can get him down though. You can get him down, you get him down kind of easily, man, at points, right? If you time him right, like I said, it's an IQ thing. But both of these guys don't have a good fight IQ. Um, you can take him down, you can submit him, man. Like I said, both guys, not the best fight IQ. So this is a, a tough fight to pick too. This is a, not a confident one for me. 
Because like I said, Devin Clark could win and also Ian could win. You know, they're both kind of similar, but I feel that with Ian, he's a little better in both departments, stand up and in the striking, right? And in the on the ground, right? The wrestling. So I'm I'm gonna go with Ian for the win here, and I'm gonna say Ian by KOTQ guys, and I'm not confident, okay. Next fight here, main fight, the main attraction here, we got Anthony Smith versus Ryan Spann. Smith here is a pretty well-rounded guy, man. Um, if you look at his record here, it's kind of deceiving, you know, looking at his record is like, what? Well, it's like, oh, he's 35 and 16, but the, the guy put the work in and been fighting for a long time, from 207, fighting for a long time, and, you know, lose some fights back in the days, but he came back in his later fights here, you know, and he's performing a little better, right? He can take this fight anywhere, man. This 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 guy, you know, I mean, he's been knocked on nine times, though. That's a lot of times he's been knocked on. It's mostly in his earlier fights. But he has freaking 14, no, my bad, he has 19 by KOTQ. So basically, Anthony Smith here, 19 by KOTQ, right? And 13 by submission, 2 by decision. So he only went to decisions twice. So it's either you're finishing this guy or this guy's going to finish you. Only two decisions, guys. All his fights here are all KOTQ and submissions. Ha! Oh, man. Um... With, with uh, Anthony Smith here, he fights more five-round fights. And um, he can carry the fight, man. Um, still can get hurt, though. And still can get knocked out. But he's been fighting a lot more smarter now. And you can tell that, you know, he's he's looking for the openings. He's looking to pace himself. And he's trying to set you up from the outside. Even with the striking. And, he, and he's trying to play that game to pull you into later rounds and then drown you. Meaning, pull you into later rounds and submit you. Probably even knock you too, but I think he's he, he's trying to set up something where he's going to pull the person into later rounds, depending on the person that he's fighting. Again, Spawn here. Spawn or Span. Span is going to have the 5 inch of reach, which is massive. He is, he's a well rounded fighter too, but also can get hurt, right? Um, catch him with a punch, he gets dazed, wobbly, um, and also can get finished. Slightly slow at the movement. He will kind of lunge forward and throw his shots, but he throws heavy behind those shots though. Um, Spawn will slow down. He will slow down in the later rounds. It's a five-round fight. Spawn doesn't do good in five-round fights. If you look at the fights that he fight five-round, he does not do good. The losses here you see is most likely in five-round fights. Five-round fights. He doesn't do good in, even though it ended the first round, but he doesn't do good in five-round fights. This one he went to decision, he loses. He doesn't do good in five round fights, man. And for those, for that reason there, I mean, Smith is experienced. I mean, Span is experienced too, but Smith is a little more experienced than Span. And Smith can carry the fight and being in there, you know, with legends and hang in there and, and pull off the fights, right? Span is like, it's, it's kind of risky, you know. You catch him with something, you know, he can get hurt and get knocked out. You put him into later rounds, he will gas out after the second round. In, in the third round, is basically done. It's a five-round fight. So I'm liking Anthony Smith for this guy because Anthony Smith could game plan him. Because like I said, Anthony Smith is setting up now. He's not just going in there. Before, he used to go in there and just go a while. Now he's, you can see the guy pacing himself and looking for openings. Maybe to land a punch, to set up a technique from the outside, or to pull you into deep waters. A good example of what he did here with... um. <laughs> um, what he did there against the, um, even Jimmy Crude and Devin Clark he, uh, Jimmy Crude would work leg kicks work leg kicks until he took his legs out he had a leg injury after that one right he kind of hit hit the nerve on the leg in the calf Devin Clark similar thing he set it up you know what I'm saying he went for takedowns Devin Clark reversed him and he knew he could submit Devin Clark from off his back it's an IQ thing Devin Clark don't have the best IQ so you can see that Smith is is you know, he's feeling when he's in there. He's not thinking too much, but he's pacing himself, right? He's feeling. Spawn will go in there, and he will throw down the first round. If he can't get the knockout, then, you know, he's going to start slowing down, man. And once he starts slowing down, you believe it, Smith is going to take over. If you see most of his fights here, what you, what you see from Spawn to a lot of first round finishes, right? A lot of these guys, you know, when they're heavy hitters like that, they're usually first round finishers. You know, they can't carry the fight, especially a five round fight. And that's the issue with this fight here. That's why I'm going with Smith. No, Spawn can catch him in the first round. 
then you could finish the fight. But once that fight go the first, you can you can see Smith pulling off the win. So I mean, let's see what happened. You know what I'm saying? So you could say Spawn maybe first round finish, or you can say Smith a yeah, third round submission, which I'm gonna go with Smith third round submission for the win, guys. So I'm liking Smith for this win for third round by submission. Okay, that's my prediction breakdown, dear guys. Um, let's take a quick look at the odds. I'm very interested to see what the odds them look like, man, because I know there's gonna be some crazy odds here, like usual. Emily Whitmire and Hanny Goldie, perfect. Like I told you guys, even fight. I've not looked at the odds yet, guys. I don't like to look at no odds until I finish my breakdowns and predictions, because the odds will play with your mind, and you'll be like, oh shoot, I should go for this guy. I like just to watch the footage and just have my own thinking, think for myself. We don't nobody. You know, looking at somebody else and go, oh man, he picking that guy? Oh man, maybe he could win. And then you change up a pick, you go ahead and pick that, and then the other guy wins. You're like, oh, damn it. So this is perfect, it's even fight. Gustavo and Heli, okay, close to even. I don't disagree. Perfect, I don't disagree. They have Heli as a little favorite there, which I totally agree there, right? And they have Whitmire as a little favorite there, but it's close to even. Perfect. Harrison and Impo, <laughs> they have Impo as favorite. Um, I disagree. I, I I disagree because the experience from Harris. I feel Harris should be a um, it should be a, a close to even, and Harris should be the favorite from from where Harris is coming from for all the experience he has and how he fights. Impa shouldn't be favorite. <laughs> so I have Harris winning, guys. So be freaking very careful if you're gonna go pick Impa for this fight. Be very careful. I like Harris for a confident pick. Nothing is is definite. You know, confident doesn't mean anything really when it comes to fight game, but just for something to say you're confident in, I'm liking Harris, so be careful with this one. I, I don't see Impa being a favorite here. At least he shouldn't be a favorite. If it's anything, it should be an even, even fight, which possibly could be even by tomorrow, right? Nate Man is Tony Gravel. Gravel, 188, straight across. Um... Uh, Tony Gravel, I would say more of, I mean, it's not bad, but I say more like 140, a little bit closer, because I, I have a feeling that Manis could win this fight, man, for that reach and height, and Manis is not bad, man, and he has a decent ground game, but he can get taken down, though, so I say 150, 160, so it's kind of there in a kind of way, and, you know, and depending on what the sides you on, you know, 177 here, so, you know, I mean, it's okay, but I'll be careful, though, but it's not bad, okay? JP buys Monta Jackson. Man, Monta Jackson is obviously going to be high. I mean, I have much confidence, so obviously. 500, um, do I see anything wrong with that? To be honest, no. Abdubilia Jackson should win this fight, but again, when we see guys with high odds, again, anything is possible, but I do like Jackson for the win. But just to be on the safe side, if you're going to do parlays or whatever you're doing, don't put, him in, don't put Jackson in too much place, just to be honest with you. I mean, even, you know, 600, 500 is, is no reason you have 14 plays on the card. If 14 plays stays on the card. But, yeah, I don't disagree, though. I feel Jackson should win, and it's a confident pick for me, okay? Aaron Backfield, Cerro Alpar. Damn. Aaron is kind of high, dude, for making her debut. I mean, I like her for the win here. And I don't have her as confident. I have her as a, as a risky play because, like I said, with Cerro Alpar... She could be the physical stronger here, but that's just dealing with strength. You know, technique plays more a factor. But strength does play when you have good technique too. But Sarah doesn't really have the, much of a good technique in the striking. Her wrestling maybe, but then the edge is on the ground. So she, Aaron being 300, I mean, I could see why. But she's making a debut. And again, Sarah, Sarah's a little more experienced. So I'll be careful with this one, to be honest with you. But I do see Aaron winning, but I still be careful. Okay? Be careful with this one. I think it should be a little bit lower. It should be maybe... Uh, maybe... Uh, maybe like 180, 170 around there. Alright? It shouldn't be like 300, man. Okay? Um, Dakota Bush and Dong Zhu. Wrong zoo, my bad guys. Dakota Bush, hold on there. That's hold on there, guys. Um what we have here? Dakota Bush. Is there a switch up here? Hold on there, guys. Take a quick look here. 
call the bush. Okay, okay, we're supposed to fight the call the bush. Did I mention that um Jenkins was a short notice? No, no I didn't I didn't mention well yeah, okay guys, my bad guys. Jenkins is a short notice guys. I forgot to tell you guys that. It's supposed to be the code of Bush. So short notice is for yeah, the code of Bush short notice and Hanny Gold the short notice and um Mantel Jackson guy here. The JP Bias guy is a short notice there. So um but like I said with Brandon Jenkins though, he's a very sneaky guy, man. This is freaking sneaky. Striking is very unorthodox. It's tricky. Um, look at they don't put the odds up for them. Okay, they do have the odds here. Um, nah, man. Rug is... Nah, nah. You see, man. You see with this? Even though Jenkins has shot notice, he just come off a PFL window. And that was that was recent. That was recent off of the PFL window he came off of. Um, yeah. It's just... He was just right over in August. Right? Um, uh, it's about Rogue. Rogue is, I mean, he's decent, but I'm not confident in him though to win. I have him winning, but I'm not confident. So, him being 300 is a no no. Even though Jenkins is a short notice, but Jenkins is a tricky freaking fighter, man. He's a tricky fighter and he's experienced and he fought in different organizations. Wrong does fight in one organization, man. And we see him losing his last fight, and he's hittable. And Jenkins is slick with the striking. You know, he's slick with it, man. I, I, di I disagree with the odds in here. And this one, I'd be very careful. This fight here, I would have it maybe very close to even. Maybe like one, maybe like 130. Very, very close. The fight could be even, but very close to even. Wrong being 300, I disagree. So be very, very, very careful. Like I do believe that I feel like Jenkins could win this fight, man, and it could even be by a knockout. So be, be freaking careful. I disagree with the odds. This is the first one I disagree with, guys. I disagree with this odds here, okay? Um, Penny Kenzard and regular Panton, okay. Uh, perfect. I don't disagree with his odds. Perfect. Close to even. Exactly. And Rekel, like what I told you guys, should be the favorite. I don't disagree. Mike Rodriguez, tough one. Tefon, okay, close to even, even fight. I don't disagree. Mike Rodriguez has a reach there and the height, but the mental not there. And Tefon kind of slowed the movement. Um, going back up to 205, I mean, anything can happen here. So close to even, I don't disagree. Um, <laughs> Buckley and Aurora. Buckley is at 190, 200. I disagree with his odds here. And I know why, because Buckley landed that spinning back kick. And, you know, hey, man, I mean, you can always learn a technique. A technician, you can learn a punch, a kick, knock somebody out. Yeah, but can you carry the fight, though? That's the thing. I feel Aurora is a more technical striker here. I feel Aurora is a better fighter, to be honest with you. Nothing, I'm not taking away from Buckley. Buckley's a good fighter, too. But technical-wise, and distance and range and timing, I feel Aurora, you just have to take down defense. And Buckley doesn't have wrestling like that. From what I see from his auto fights, he's, he's, I mean, he's training wrestling, and maybe he has trained wrestling, but he 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 is not like Win. You know what I'm saying? He's not like Win that's going to grind, grind, grind consistently like that. And he can't take a hit, man. So for him to be 200, I totally disagree, and I have Aurora winning the fight, guys. So be very freaking careful. This is the next one that I disagree with. Be very freaking careful with this one, okay? Nate Man is Tony Gravel. Tony Gravel at 200. Um... I disagree with this one from what I told you guys. I feel like Manis, there's just something telling me that Manis can. You know what, man? When I was looking at this fight, I'm like thinking that Manis could pull it off by watching the footages of him. But the, but the wrestling from Gravel is what kind of pushed me towards that. And when I see from Manis with the other guys, you know, the guys that he's fighting who have wrestling, he doesn't do too well. Right? So that's why I'm edging it to Gravel. And also, you train an American top team now, so they're going to come up with a good game plan for him. But him being 200, uh, I'd be careful. I, I would make it closer, very close to even. Maybe gravel, maybe like 140, maybe 150 around there. I have him winning, but be careful because Menes could win the fight. So this is the next one that I disagree with too, guys. Okay, so be very careful with this one. Um, Armand Tisharukin versus Kristen Gagas. Wow, man, they got Armand high as hell, dude. I am confident in him winning, though. 
but I'm going to check the scales out and see what it looks like. I know he, I know he, that he made weight from what we saw from a topology. Came in at 155, right? But, uh, man, you know, like I said, guys, you know, guys, high odds like this, man, anything is possible. I mean, Gagos is an experienced guy, and he has submissions, and he has striking. So, but but Tashurkin, man, he, that guy is, like I said, you know, he's like Khabib style, man. He's not Khabib. Nobody can be Khabib, but he, he, he has the credential. He has the movement. He has Dagestanian techniques. Hand, he has a hand cough, the lace, the legs, and all these things. So he could pull off a win. I mean, most likely he will win the fight, man, to be honest. But 800 is very high. I, that's, I'm just going to say don't put him in too much parlays, man. But I do have him winning, and it's a confident one. So really, I don't disagree. But I wouldn't put him in too many parlays, okay? Aaron Lipsky and Mandy Bomb. I don't disagree with this one at all. Even fight. I do not disagree. Close to even. They have uh, Lipsky as a slight favorite. You know, it's okay. You know, she's a more experienced. But like from her performance, she's not performing well. So I don't disagree with the odds in here, guys. Okay. Devin Clark, Ian Cutabello. Next fight here, Cutabello. <laughs> at 150. I don't disagree. I do have Ian winning the fight. Um, yeah, I really don't disagree with that. I feel Ian, you know, supposed to can win this fight. So I don't disagree, okay? Anthony Smith, Ryan Spann. I got Smith at 172, 160. Yeah. I actually don't disagree with this one either. I, I do feel that um, Anthony Smith can win this fight too. If you take Ryan Spann after that first round, it's over. If Ryan Spann don't finish him in that first round, it's over. So... So that's it. So the odds don't look too bad. The only couple guys are um the let me see here which one I don't agree with. Nate Manis and Tony Gravel, I disagree with the odds on that one. Um Aurora and Buckley totally disagree with that one. Um uh, the Iran fighter, the Iran Blatchfield, um I don't really disagree too much, but I wouldn't parlay here too much in that one. Um, so really it's just the Aurora and Buckley, Nate Manis and Tony Gravel, and um, what's the other one here? And uh, yeah, that's those two, right? Yeah, Manny, Gravel, um, Buckley. And yeah, yeah, only those two fights I don't agree with, man. So yeah, so so pretty pretty much the odds look pretty right. I mean, to what I'm looking at. Um, oh yeah, and the Impa here, which is, I mean, the Impa fight is close to even anyway. So it's very, very close to even. So, I mean, I have, you know, Harris winning, but it's an even fight. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm, but I'm confident in Harris though, but it's even. So, I mean, it's, it's fine. It's not like Impa's a massive favorite, okay? Um, yeah, so there's only two two guys really I don't really agree with, which is the the um, the which is Aurora and Buckley. I think Buckley's too high. I think Tony Gravel is too high on that one. The ones with the high odds, you shouldn't parlay them too much in too much place because upsets do happen. So that's it there, guys. Those are my odd breakdowns there. And it looks pretty good, man. I mean, the odds look okay. Just two guys that I see that's not too well, like Buckley and um, Gravel. Uh, so I, feel, I feel like it should be a little closer. But overall, the card, it looks pretty decent, okay? So that's it, guys. Um, remember to check out my Patreon account. I'm going to drop the face off on there. I'm going to drop some um, prop bets on there and also some combination parlays on there too. Subscribe to my channel. Give me some thumbs up. Leave some comments down below. Just let me know what you guys you know, want me to talk about more on the fights. If you guys have any other fights you want to talk about. Um, also, I'm a patron. I'll be dropping some boxing on there too. And some Bellator, which I'm going to do right now. And drop it on the YouTube. And then the face-offs. And the prop bet's going to be on my Patreon account. Keep on kicking, guys. Subscribe to this channel. One love to everybody. And we'll see.